This is Joseph Trust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, what determines where the symmetry happens when using mirror and weld? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I have the demo soldier here loaded in. Now the question is asking about using mirror and weld. So if I navigate over the tool palette over here, and then open the geometry tab, and then open the modified topology area, in here you have a button called mirror and weld. Now as an example of this with the demo soldier here, I've just repositioned one of his arms so it's up a little bit. So if you just come over here and click mirror and weld, ZBrush is going to look at one side of the model here. It's going to mirror that side to the other side of the model, and then it's gonna perform a weld down the middle. So if I come over here and click mirror and weld with its default settings, I'm gonna get this effect. So you'll notice that the arm has now been transferred over from the one side of the model here, and it is now replicated on the other side. So the question is asking what determines how this mirror weld process happens, and is there anything you can do to modify it or change it so it processes differently? So the first thing to take note of is that the mirror and weld is going to use the world axes. So to see these inside of ZBrush, you just need to activate the floor grid. So by clicking the floor grid on here, you should now get a floor grid on your scene, and then you'll notice these little faint lines. Now these lines are showing you the axis positions inside of ZBrush. So you can see these lines here are converging into the center of the demo soldier here. So that is the zero zero of the world. So if I undo that mirror and weld process I did before, and now let's say I take the demo soldier and I switch to the transpose line and then move him a little bit off the center of the world. And now if I come over here and click mirror and weld again, it's going to now mirror the demo soldier like this. So it's using the center of the world to determine how that mirroring is going to happen. Now as a better example of this, I'm just going to undo this and I'm just going to zoom out. I have another subtool attached to this file and this just has some larger examples of where these positional axes are. So as you can see here, these are all pointing in the direction that if you move the demo soldier it would be a positive change in the world. So you can see the X is over here, the Z is in the front, and the Y is in the top. Now these also correlate to the sides that the mirror and weld will start from and paste to. So as we saw here with the demo soldier here, it's going to take this side of the demo soldier and then paste it on the other side. And then if I do a mirror and weld in the Z by coming over here and changing these buttons at the top of the mirror and weld, so I can just set the Z axis. And now when it does the Z mirror and weld, it's going to take this part or the front part of the demo soldier here, and it's gonna mirror and weld across that center line, and it's gonna modify the back of him. So if I click mirror and weld, I'm now going to get this effect. So it's always going from one specific side of your model and performing the mirror and weld. It's never going to process it in reverse. So I'm just gonna undo this quick here. So the process of using the mirror and weld is always gonna be based on the position in the world. So wherever you have your model, if I move them off the center of the world here and now perform that mirror and weld, it's going to now mirror it differently. So you see now that I have him fully away from that center axis, it's now gonna give me two demo soldiers. If I undo that and just move his arm at that center line there and mirror and weld, I'm now going to have the demo soldier joined at that middle arm position. So wherever the model is positioned in the world is going to determine how the mirror and weld happens. So if I just want arms, I can just move them like this. Now the Y axis inside of ZBrush will give you a little different result, and it's also going to have a pop-up that's going to show up. So if I come over here to the mirror and weld option and activate Y and turn off X and now click mirror and weld, I'm gonna get this little dialog that's gonna pop up. And this is telling me that the floor grid is not set to zero. So what does this mean? So inside of ZBrush, when you import a model in, if the model is in the center of the world, ZBrush is going to try to always put this floor grid at the base of the mesh. So the center of the world is dead center in the demo soldier here, but you can see the floor grid is down below. So if you want to visualize this grid plane in the center of the world, we need to just change that in the draw options. So I'm gonna navigate up here to the draw menu and open this up. And then in here, you have a elevation slider here, and this will change the grid elevation. By default, anytime you open ZBrush, this is gonna be set to negative one. And this is just gonna allow that floor grid to always snap to the bottom of your model, so giving it more of a floor type aspect. If you want it to always be at the zero, zero of the world, you just need to change this to zero. So I'm going over here and type in zero and hit enter. And now you'll notice that that floor grid is now directly in the center of this world. So now if I come back and do this mirror and weld in Y, 
It's now going to take the top of the model here, which is this side of the Y, and it's going to transfer it to the other side. So if I click it now, I'm now going to get this reflection type effect here on the demo solder. So it's taken the top part of the demo solder there and mirrored it down below underneath that floor grid. So that is one thing that's going to be a little bit different when using mirror and weld with the Y than if you use it with the X or the Z. Now, in addition to just mirroring and welding with the world axis here, you can also enable local symmetry. So if I undo the demo soldier here, and now let's say I move them off to the side again, and let's say I activate local symmetry. So local symmetry is turned on by activating this button here. So what this does, instead of using the world axis to use mirror and welding or even symmetry, it's going to use the local axis. So it's going to generate a bounding box around your shape, and then it's going to generate a center line directly in the middle. So if I do this mirror well process with the demo soldier here, and I just change this back to X and turn off Y, and now I click mirror and weld, you see I'm just gonna get the version of the demo soldier here twice. So the center line of the world is right here. It's gonna take the demo soldier that's on this side and then mirror and weld it over to the other side. So if I undo this, and now let's activate local symmetry. So now instead of looking at the world axis, it's now going to look at the local symmetry of the mesh. So now if I perform this mirror and weld here, you're gonna notice I'm not going to get two demo soldiers, but I'm only going to get one demo soldier and you see that his arm has been mirror and welded to the other side. So it's looking at just the local symmetry of the model. So this is handy if you have you know, different models that are out in space and you know they're symmetrical out in space, you can turn on this local symmetry, and then when you click mirror and weld, it's going to look at the local symmetry of the model instead of the world symmetry. So the process again to perform a mirror and weld is that the center of the world is going to be your default positioning of how these effects are going to happen. And this is just going to be based on where your model is positioned around that center axis. But if you have local symmetry turned on, it's now going to use the local symmetry of the model. So it's going to generate a bounding box around your mesh and then it's going to generate center lines in each of those axes based on that. So when you perform a mirror and weld function that way, it's going to do it in a local fashion rather than a world fashion. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing!